Uh, good afternoon. Wow. That got interesting last night, didn't it? What turned out is what I thought was going to be a quick night. Pop over, do the do the, <laughs> do the American thing to do, watch the election, thought I'd be able to go to bed. That turned into a 3.30 a.m. Uh, all-nighter. I'm going to win places like Michigan. <laughs> um, so there's so there's so much to talk about, but let me let me lay this out there. We we do things pretty unapologetically, and today won't be any different. I don't control what anybody else does at this place. They can all do what they want to do, and that's how I do things. I do what I want to do. Uh, we are going to talk about the election. If you don't like that, we'll talk to you tomorrow. It's just that simple. Biggest story in the world. One of the craziest upsets uh, in any realm of life you could think of um we deal in sport we deal in upsets we deal in shocking that that's like our calling card that's how we do talk radio you talk about the unexpected or or you try to make these bold calls i mean what you saw last night if the world's still around in 100 years or 200 years that's what people are going to read about as the greatest political upset in history and the way we do this gig is simple it's the average person woke up this morning, and I don't think they were really thinking about a Tigers rumor. I think you're thinking about either holy bleep who won the election or you had some other strong thoughts that, frankly, I wasn't interested in hearing. That's why I don't bother with the social media. So the point is this. Everybody had a reaction to it. Everybody's got something. So I thought of this with an upset, Riggs, as momentous as this. Yeah. And again... I I I don't I don't care if you're happy or sad. I don't care if you're left or right. They're all clowns, and in many ways, the political system's getting exactly what it deserves—a clown. Um, but the point is, with something this big, I didn't think one word would cut it. So I wanted to offer people this to just start the show, just kind of see where we go down the road of responsibility. Your reaction to last night's election in two words. You can talk beyond that. You can explain yourself. But what are those two words that describe what took place last night in American history? Woo! Okay. I'll throw the number out. I, I mean, I, me and Rieger have some thoughts. I'll, I'll deliver them. I mean, I, I think it's easy for me to deliver thoughts because I don't have a party. I don't like either side. It doesn't matter to me. I just look at all of it as folly. And there are certain elements of this that are scary. There are certain elements of where we were headed that were scary. So, I, you know, you guys can do whatever you want to do. It's free country. But I want to throw the number out, 248-539-9797. Whether you watched it with your wife, your girlfriend, your husband, your children, alone, whatever. Everybody watched the election last night. And whether you watched it or just woke up to it, everyone's aware of it. So my question to you is the two words that describe your reaction to all of this. And it's more about letting you guys talk about it. I'll give my thoughts. I've got four hours to do it. But I want to get the people involved early uh, and kind of get a sense whether your initial response of, like, like me, it's utterly stunning would be my two words. Just completely stunning. By an entire industry, the polling industry got it wrong. The entire media got it wrong. But everybody who's paid to not miss this badly missed this badly. Right. And you're looking at one of the most unlikely, uh, some people would say disturbing, um, presidential candidates and now president-elect in the history of politics, in American politics, I should say. Believe it or not, this type of stuff happens in other countries. And that's why other countries aren't as good as ours. But I digress. Look. Give me the two-word reaction. Rieger, you watched it last night. You had a family affair. The yeah. Two, the two-word reaction. Yeah, I'm just going to be honest. Uh, all bleep, because I can't say. <laughs> so all bleep. And that's not even anything against Donald Trump. It's I'm just amazed how it all went down, how everybody got it wrong, as you mentioned. And I'm just amazed, too, and, and I can't stop thinking this, that yeah, Trump won, obviously. But I feel more like Hillary lost. I feel like she had so many advantages and she played it all wrong. Well, all right, there's a couple of things. I want to stick with your initial reaction, though, because I. Fair enough. I think, and no, and I'll, I'll get to part two of it. I just, we have so much time to do that. I, I, I don't think we need to throw the, 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 the 50 yard pass right now. A draw play will do. It's what about just, a screen? I love screenplays. 
Uh, we don't run them at yeah, state. Yeah, your team doesn't you know. do that. Um, when you – like last night, when, when Florida went to Trump, you went, okay, now we have some interest. And then you got the early results in Ohio and in North Carolina, and you go, wow, this is going from interesting to really intriguing. And by the time the late night stuff started to happen and you saw, wow, he got like every county from Erie, PA, all the way to Cleveland, which is Bluebell, Wisconsin, Michigan, you went, holy hell, this could actually happen. The moment they walked him across the stage with the Donald Trump wins presidential, you know, elect, it was one of the most bizarre moments. It's surreal would be my word, surreal moments of my life. Because, again, as someone without a dog in the fight, I sit back and I look at this and I look at Donald Trump, the TV guy, or Donald Trump, the WWE Hall of Famer, or Donald Trump, the, the, the cartoon character. And I'm now looking at Donald Trump possessing, in short order, the most powerful office in the world. It is so surreal. And I watched it alone. My, my wife was up. She tried staying up till about 10.45, and she goes, babe, I'm done. I so can't. You I were can't. up till 3.30. I was. I couldn't stop. Yeah, I was up to like 2.10. I, I got a sense I was watching something that truly 20 years, 50 years, 100 years from now that this world will discuss and look at. And I don't know what terms they'll discuss it in. I think I have an idea. But look, it just it warrants discussion. It was amazing to me just how it all flipped so quickly. And everybody, as you mentioned, obviously thought Trump, Trump was going to lose. But at about 1130, I feel blank got real. And from that point on, you're like, wow. And then they start talking about Hillary can only win if this, this, and this happened. Right. When it was always Trump can never get you to 270. It's not going to happen. That's when the, the, the script was flipped. It was amazing. And it was also really, really intriguing to see how people, and again, this happens to us. Like if a big trade goes down today, if Miguel Cabrera gets dealt to the Astros. That's the rumor. You're going to hear 10 or 15 minutes of adjusting on the fly where you're just taken aback by something, right? Kind of like the Prince Fielder trade right. way back when, or right. acquisition. You saw that, but it was with the entire world of media. No one knew how to react to what they were seeing. No one was prepared to even fathom that this could happen. And you saw some very good people on both sides of the aisle, depending on what network you choose to watch. Very good, very qualified people who had, they. it was almost like you had blindfolded them, thrown them in the back of a van, dumped them out on a highway, and they were just taking the blindfold off and going, where the hell am I? Nobody knew how to process what was happening? Well, let's be honest, too. If Hillary wins that election, we're talking Miguel Cabrera right now because that's what everybody thought was going to happen. And we may still get there, but the point no, no, I make I to it. you is yeah. the guy who won this was the equivalent of a of, – it's an, it's an incalculable underdog because you're, you're looking at – Riggs, it's, it's not a game or it's not a – Hey, look, uh, you know, Nikki Six is the mayor of Minneapolis. Um, it, it's the president like the of the body United Minnesota. States of America. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, 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 of Somehow course. we find those things to be hee-hee palatable. The president of the United States is Donald Trump. Because other than Trump supporters, when this whole thing's going on for the last two years, nobody ever believed it. Nobody oh, ever we're going to win. We're going to win so big. Nobody no, believe we're, that. We're all guilty. I treated it as a joke. Yeah. Because I, I misidentified where I really, really missed the mark on one critical thing. And, and I, and I want to tell you what it is next. It's probably going to upset some people, but that's not my problem. I don't get paid based on likability. I get paid on just telling you the truth. 